Hello students and welcome to chapter 3. Uh, today we're going to discuss the adjusting process or the adjusting entries. In chapter 3 we'll be talking about the accrual basis of accounting. And under the accrual basis of accounting you're going to record revenue when it's earned, not necessarily when, it's, when the cash is received, and you're going to record expense when it is incurred, not necessarily when the cash is paid. Um, there are four different types of adjusting entries that we will talk about in the chapter, and I have them listed here. You've got prepaid expenses, you've got unearned revenue, accrued expenses, and accrued revenue. Okay? And this all has to do with when cash has been paid or has not been paid. All right? Everything revolves around cash. So let's look at the cash elements of these. All right? If you have prepaid expenses, that means that you have paid cash in advance of actually incurring an expense. So we're going to put it in some type of asset account until we get ready to charge it to expense. Okay, then we have unearned revenue, which is when cash is received from someone else before you actually earn the revenue. So in this case, we'll put what we receive into a liability account because until we earn the revenue, we have an obligation to pay that back to whoever gave it to us. All right, these are uh, just the opposite. The accrued expenses, in this case, the expense is incurred before any cash is paid, um, so the cash will come later. And in this case, the accrued revenue, the revenue is earned before cash is received. So this has to do with timing differences. Timing differences between revenues has been earned and the cash is received um, or when uh, expense is incurred and the cash is paid. Okay? So that's what we're going to talk about. Now let's look at some of the individual items here. We'll start with prepaid expenses. So I'm going to erase part of this here so we can have some room on the board. We actually have already talked about a type of prepaid expense in uh, previous chapters, and that is supplies. Supplies is an asset when you purchase it, but it is something that you are going to use up rather quickly. So it will turn into an expense pretty quickly. So we call that a prepaid expense. Now we know that when we purchase supplies, we're going to debit supplies, the asset, and we're going to either credit cash or credit accounts payable. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use T accounts because uh, T accounts are very useful in analyzing transactions, analyzing what goes through an account, so that's what I'm going to do. Now remember, the left side of the T account is the debit. I'll put it up here one time, but later on I will not. And the right side is the credit because we always know that's going to be the case, okay? But we know that the left side will be the debit and the right side will be the credit. Okay, we're going to call this account supplies. This is our asset account. And over here, I'm going to put another T account. I'll put the debits and credits here one more time. And this is supplies expense. Okay. Now, as I said, when we purchase supplies, we either, we're either we going to debit supplies and either credit cash or accounts payable, depending on how we or, uh, purchase them. So let's say we purchased um, $2,000 in supplies. Now that's not the adjusting entry. That is the original entry, okay? Um, and the original entry would have been a debit to supplies and a credit to cash or to accounts payable. Now, the adjusting entry is when we determine how much we have at the end of the period. Let's go count our supplies and let's say we have four, uh, 500. Let's say we have 500 left. So I'm going to put down here that we have a balance. That's what I know that we have is a balance of $500 in supplies. So that's what I want to end up with in my supplies account. So how do I find out what the adjusting entry is? I simply subtract the 500 from the 2,000 and that would give me an adjusting entry of 1,500 and that entry would be a credit to supplies because we are reducing supplies. At the same time that we uh, reduce supplies, we're going to increase our supplies expense. So over here we have a debit to supplies expense. 
And in journal for, form, that would be a debit to supplies expense and a credit to supplies. Remember, we talked about the correct format of a journal entry, and since you know the correct format, I'm not going to put up debits and credits, and I'm not going to tell you which one of these is a debit and which one is a credit, because you should know. You should know that the debit always comes first, the credit, and then it comes second. So we have uh, supplies expense, 1,500 debit, and supplies, I'm sorry, that's 1,500, 1,500 credit. And that's your journal entry in T-account form and in journal form. Uh, that is one of the prepaid expenses. Okay? All right, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about another type of prepaid expense, which is prepaid insurance. Okay? Okay, we'll put up the T-accounts again. I'm not going to put the debits and credits in this time. I'm going to say prepaid insurance. And this time we'll have insurance expense. Abbreviate a little bit there. Okay. Now, a lot of times companies will pay for insurance in advance. They pay for maybe a one-year policy or a two-year policy. But you haven't actually incurred that expense until time passes. Again, we have a timing difference. Uh, so let's say that uh, we purchased a one-year insurance policy for $12,000. It's on the entire company. So the original entry would be a debit to prepaid insurance. In this case, it would probably be cash as the credit. A debit to prepaid insurance and a credit to cash because we're actually paying for the insurance policy. Again, that's not the adjusting entry. What we want to do when we get to the end of a period is actually take the expense for that period. So let's say we've gotten to the end of the first month, okay? Uh, this is a 12-month policy, so 12,000 divided by 12 equals 1,000. So that's the amount that we're going to adjust out of prepaid insurance and put into insurance expense. So, so to, incre uh, to, excuse me, to decrease prepaid insurance, we're going to credit it. And to increase insurance expense, we're going to debit it. Okay? Now that brings our balance in the prepaid insurance account down to 11000 which represents the prepaid insurance for the next 11 months. But now we've already incurred the expense for this one, so we're going to go ahead and, and debit insurance expense and credit prepaid insurance. In journal format, that would be a debit to insurance expense, I'm going to abbreviate to save some space here, and a credit to prepaid insurance. Okay, and that is a $1,000 debit and a $1,000 credit. So here you have the entry in T-account format and also in uh, journal format. So that's another type of prepaid um, expense. And we have others. You might have prepaid rent. Um, if you're paying rent in advance, if you uh, rent a building or whatever, you're paying in advance, you might have that as well. But that's another type there of prepaid uh, expense. Now let's go to unearned revenue. That one's a little tricky for most people. And the only reason that it is tricky is because we put it into a liability account, and that seems to be confusing for students. Um, so I'll just warn you up front that you might have more trouble with that one. Okay, let's say that someone pays us, well, let's talk about rent. Uh, I said a minute ago we might be renting a building from someone else, but someone might be renting a building from us. And they pay for the entire, uh, let's say two years this time, um, maybe a two-year lease. Um, they pay for a two-year lease up front. Okay? Now, we haven't actually earned that revenue. It would, it would go into rent revenue normally, but we haven't earned it yet, so we're going to put it into an account called unearned revenue. Okay, and as I mentioned before, this is a 
liability account because we have a liability to pay it back to the person that paid it to us if we don't actually, if they move out and we don't actually earn the revenue. Okay, so let's say uh, 24000 for two years. I said two years, so I wouldn't have the same numbers that I had in the previous uh, exercise. Um, so we're going to say they paid up front. We debited cash because we received the cash. And we know that when we received cash, we debited. And we credited unearned revenue. That was the original entry. Again, that's not the adjusting entry. That's the original entry. Okay? But now we've gone through a month's period of time, and we want to make an adjustment. Okay, we now have earned one month's rent. And since we're talking about rent, let's change this account to rent instead of just revenue. It could be unearned revenue, but let's call it unearned rent. And over here we're going to have rent revenue. Okay, so after one month, I have 24000 divided by 24 months, we said two years, and that is 1000 per month that our, our tenant would be paying us for rent. So now we have earned one month's rent. We're going to take one month out of unearned rent with a debit. We're going to put one month's rent into rent revenue with a credit. Okay? Because we know we increase revenue with a credit, we know we decrease liabilities with a debit. Now the balance in the unearned Rent account is 23000 which represents the rent for the next 23 months, which has been paid to us but has not yet been earned. Now the journal entry for that, uh, let me erase this so I can have a little bit more room, would be a debit to unearned rent. That's the debit. And the credit goes to rent revenue. And that was for $1,000, debit and credit. <clears throat> so there you have your uh, entry for unearned revenue, in this case unearned rent, uh, in T-account format and in journal format. Debit, credit, debit, credit, debit, credit, debit, credit. Okay? All right, uh, I think I'll stop for now and uh, let you absorb that. And in the next video, we'll talk about the accrued expenses and the accrued revenue. And we'll probably come back and talk about another type of prepaid expenses, uh, which is called depreciation. Uh, so it'll take me a little bit more time to go through that one. Okay, that's all for now.